uh, one of the interesting things that we want to do, and this is maybe something that y'all can y'all can talk to me about after if you're curious or, or, or clever with this type of thing. Um, Xerox, uh, Xerox runs the trunk for 13 states for the SNAP system uh, for the for the food stamps. Um, it, like we said, they cannot release it, uh, they cannot release in individual uh, level uh, purchasing information, and they cannot release the final business recipients of that money. So what we could get them to do was to release um, a cardholder zip code, and then the month that they made their visit, how many visits, and the sum of those uh, and the sum of those transactions. And that goes back like since we've had our FNS number, which is like uh, 2011, I think, like that. And then uh, the tr the tricky thing that is though that we have a single FNS number to serve the entire city of Chicago network of, of farmers markets. So it's really really difficult for us to unpack this because they only are giving it to us by the month, and not by like day to day. In which case we would be able to say, oh, that transaction was at that market or whatever else. So uh, tricky stuff. But we literally just got this data and we're kind of like trying to pour through it and see if there's kind of like some cool stuff to see. Like, are there any gaps? Any areas of the city that we're missing that we should maybe put another farmers market or like an area that's underserved or hard to get to or something like that. Uh, next slide. Uh, same view of this. Uh, the other thing that we have uh, access to is that the number of households and individuals for every given zip code, uh, quarter quarter by quarter. So we could kind of possibly, I don't know how to do this, but maybe y'all know how to do this. Uh, compare uh, compare like current uh, health, food stamp households by zip code versus. The kind of like economic activity that happened through our uh, through our work at the farmers markets, <laughs> kind of an idea. Anyway, next. Uh, we've already gotten into this a lot, so I'm going to kind of go quickly. The double value coupon programs. So that's the incentive that we've been talking about. It's the dollar for dollar match. They've been happening all across the country for a number of years now. Um, some folks are all about them. Some folks do them do them less so. And like Danny was saying, it's all kind of part of a lead up to try to get these value incentives worked into federal legislation. We did get them into the farm bill for the, uh, for this year's farm bill. However, at the very least, they are going to require a 50-50 match. So that means we're still going to need that philanthropic money, that state money, that community money, whatever else, in order to pull down those federal funds to match. Also, it's really sad, but if you look at the tiny little $100 million slice over five years versus the billions, 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 billions of sacks of subsidies for the nasty stuff, it's like, why did you guys see them? You know, like why, why, like why did you pay all this money? It's kind of like symbolic money, but hey, we're gonna take it. We're gonna work with it. Um, next slide. Uh, next slide. Blah blah. blah, blah, blah. Uh, just a visual view. This is based on a real purchase at 61st Street last year. This is your $25 spend, real farmers market prices, and this is when you double it. So if you're thinking about uh, what that can mean uh, week to week uh, for a family uh, that is in need of uh, extra healthy food. Um, this is like kind of a Im image way to have a peek at that. That's that. That's that for that. Uh, next one. Uh, blah, blah, blah. One out of six Illinois receive SNAP link benefits. Hunger is a huge problem. Uh, even as the economy starts to get a little bit better, hunger also is getting worse. So we need to have deep thoughts as a society about that. Um, and as we see before, also uh, SNAP benefits have been going down and down and down. Last fall, the extension ran out, knocked about 8% off, and then with the coming farm bill, I think we're seeing another, uh, I forget the exact percentage, but it's another ding in the amount that um, food assistance uh, per family will have, so that's kind of gross. So this is the, the data that uh, Daniel kind of um, referenced before. So. Every year we do a survey of link shoppers just to give you the idea of the sample size. This was probably, I think, like 58, um, and that's on that October day that we did that. That's how many link shoppers um, we were able to catch um, at the <laughs> farmer's market. And like uh, Daniel said, it seems kind of like a dirty stat, but it's true. Zero percent of link shoppers would have shopped at 61st Street without the double value coupon incentive, which speaks to your um, call for inexpensive organic food. Um, it's not there. Uh, the other thing, 85% uh, of customers um, consume more fresh produce because they use the double value coupon program. Um, and as Daniel talked about before, we're seeing a huge stretch between, and we're only redeeming probably like a thousand uh, per market. So when you compare a three or four hundred dollar bump down at the last market of the month versus the first, because people's link dollars are running out, um, that DVCP really um, is kind of a band-aid measure to to let folks uh, stretch their food budget at the end of the month. All right. 